This is my old account, Nibskate2. Recently, he's been filming my series, Escape Free to Play. However, it's time to escape. We've got ourselves a bond, and now it's time for the big leap onto membership. In this series, we're going to look at different members' money makers, each episode focusing on a different one and working out just how long it will take to maintain the bond doing this method. Welcome to my new series, Avoiding Free to Play. So welcome back to episode 11 of the series and today we are going to be doing some Barrow. So we're going to quickly go over the requirements first. So for the requirements, the only actual requirement you need to do Barrows is the quest Priest in Peril. Now this is only to access Mauritania and it is the actual only requirement you need to do this. However, there are a few recommended. Now, for the recommended stats, I'd highly, highly recommend a high mage. The higher your magic level, pretty much the better. If you have 75 plus, you can actually wield one of the tridents. That's definitely going to help you out massively. If not, obviously, I've only got 68 magic, I think. And there are ways around it, so I will be showing that. The only other thing I'd highly recommend is having the hard Mauritania diaries done. This is actually going to increase the amount of profit you make massively. On average, it's around about 20k more per chest you do. So if you do 10 chests per hour, you're looking at around about 200k more, which does definitely add up. So 100% worth doing that. Other than that, that pretty much wraps up all the recommended stats. So next up, we are going to go over the equipment. So we've got a fairly decent amount of money now i am a little bit limited obviously magic ideally you're going to want to go for the trident of the seas it's by far the best so obviously i don't have access to that so i'm going to be using the ivan staff it is still very very good and obviously you only need to complete underground pass to get hold of it i am going to have to go and upgrade it first uh, i think that costs around about 250k so it is a little bit of money to invest into it but it is still a very very good viable weapon to do barrows but obviously to upgrade the staff if you haven't done it already you have to go sort of towards the underground pass or where you start that and just next to that you find yourself the dark mage and you can actually get him to upgrade it so there we go it only costs 200k so actually not too bad at all and it gives you 2500 charges against obviously monsters so there we go that's our charged iban staff now what we'll do is we'll go back to Varrock and get the rest of the equipment. So probably one of the best items to get a hold of for doing barrows and relatively cheap is the occult necklace. So this is under 330k but it does give you a massive bonus when it comes to your magic attack. Oh shit. Well it turns out you actually need 70 magic to equip that and I don't have 70 magic so I'm going to be trading that back for probably a glory. So we're also going to be going for a Torag's plate body. Again, pretty cheap, but it's, it gives you some pretty good defensive stats. For the leg slot, we're going to be getting a Varex plate skirt. Again, this is very tanky, but also gives you some pretty good prayer stats as well. We're going to grab ourselves some dragon boots for the boot slot. A dragon dagger for our spec weapon. I'm actually going to complete a Book of Darkness page set. Very, very cheap, but it's actually going to be a very nice offhand for Mage. So we're going to grab ourselves a Helm of Nazar's Knot. This is, again, relatively cheap. Gives some okay defensive stats and also some strength bonuses. We are going to have to kill a couple of skeletons to maximise the amount of profit we can make. So what I'm going to be doing to, to help with this is buying ourselves a Dragon Skimmy. Ideally, you'd want an Abbey Whip, but I don't quite have the, uh, the funds to afford that. So yeah, we're just going to stick with a Dragon Skimmy. Now we're also going to need a range switch. So we're going to just grab ourselves a Magic Short Bow. And obviously ammo for that. We're just going to get ourselves some Rune Arrows. They're not crazy expensive. Probably three, 400. We'll go for 500. That should be more than enough. And then also some slightly better range gear. I'm just going to go for some Black Beehives again. Very, very cheap, but more than capable for what we want. Now for the supplies, we are going to need quite a few prayer potions, so I'm going to buy 25, should be more than enough. If we have any left over, obviously I can just work out exactly what the costs were 
to be able to work out our profit. Um, what we are going to need as well is some, some good food. So we're just going to buy some sharks. And we'll buy ourselves about 80 of them. Once again, we're going to have more left over, but we can just work out exactly what we use. And then we're going to buy ourselves, we're going to buy a couple ring of jewel ins. This is probably going to be our best teleport to bank and obviously restore our stats. So we'll get ourselves some of them. We'll grab ourselves some stamina potions. And then the last item we need is the teleport to get there in the first place. And we're just going to be using a Barrow's teleport. These, again, pretty cheap and they get you straight there. So it's definitely going to save you quite a lot of time. I honestly can't see us doing more than 15 trips within this hour period. So, uh, so we'll get 15, maybe 16 just in case. Obviously, once again, I can work out exactly how much it cost us. Oh, and another item we might need is obviously glove slot. I do have Barrow's gloves, so I'll be wearing them. We are also going to need to get ourselves, obviously, runes to cast Ivan's Blast in the first place. And the runes we need are Death Runes. Now, I'm going to get 1k of these, more than enough, once again. And we should probably actually gain them over time anyway, so it's, it's not too bad. And the other rune we need is Fire Runes. And I'm going to buy ourselves 5k of them. Now, it's time to work out our setup. So, my inventory setup is going to be a little like this. Enough prayer potions to, to last you, a stamina potion to make sure you can run through. Obviously your switch for your range and then obviously our dragon skimmy and our defender for just cleaning up the points at the end. But that is us all set, ready to go, ready to hopefully get ourselves an item. I'm going to be doing this for an hour. I might get really unlucky and not make much of a profit or I could make quite a bit of a profit. But what I will do is work out exactly how many we got within this hour and we can actually kind of calculate exactly what the profit rate would have been on an average over how many kills I got. So yeah, we'll be doing that as well. But yeah, here we are ready to go. Um, obviously, I'm going to run you through our first Barrows run. So first thing we're going to do is break our Barrows teleport. And this lands us in a very nice spot right outside, ready to go. If you haven't got a spade, you can actually take a spade from here. So uh, yeah. We're all set, let's get started. Now I sort of make my rotation. I start with Darok, which is obviously the northeast corner. I then sort of work my way down. I then go along, up, down, that way. I always start with Darok because he's the most awkward and it's nice to know if he's coming up at the end. Because with Darok, he's so easy for him to just one hit you, especially if he's low health. So, we're all set, we're all good to go. What we're gonna do is Get the timer started, you use your spade, like so. You then go to the sarcophagus, make sure you've got protect from melee on, make sure you've got your Ivan's Blast on, and then we just sit back and kill Darok. As you can see, the hits are pretty decent. I mean, it shouldn't take too long really to kill him. We've got plenty of prayer potions, should be absolutely fine. And there we go, first one dead. Move on to the next one. This is Guffins. Obviously, his special ability is he can heal himself. Attack the Sarcophagus. Put your Protect from Melee back on. And then attack him once more. There we go. Guffins is dead. Then we move on to the next one. So now with Kirill. So with Kirill, obviously, you're going to want to make sure you're protecting from range. You're going to want to use your special attacks with your Dragon Dagger. Like so. And then just switch back to Mage. And then finish him off. Next is Arims. He's going to be attacking you with Mage. So just make sure you've got your Mage Prayer on. And you're going to want to range him. Now you want to get back in your Mage gear again. And go for Torax. Pretty simple. Just sit back. Make sure your Prayers don't drop. So just top them up every now and again. It is pretty simple. Obviously the last one. Or if one of them comes up that you can go down. Obviously you just want to go back up. Do all the rest of them and then go back. Obviously, it just so happened to be the last one I went to, which is awesome stuff. And then we'll show you how to get through the catacombs. Okay, so next up is Ferax. Obviously, one of the brothers, you can actually go down into the tunnels. So what we'll do now is we're going to get into our gear so we can kill a couple of skeletons and stuff as we go down. As it comes up like this, you found a hidden tunnel. Do you want to enter? Yes, go down there. I'm fearless. And now basically all you want to do is make your way to the center. So there's some doors that you can open, some doors you can open. Obviously this door here is the one I have to open, so we're going to go through this way. 
as you go through each door, it has a chance of spawning Tharak. If he doesn't spawn, if you open the chest, it will 100% spawn him anyway, so you'll always get the chance to kill all of the brothers. We're going to kill one skeleton, and we'll probably kill a blood worm or two, and that is just to get our potential up as high as possible, obviously, before entering. As you get to the final door, so you can actually enter the middle, you get a puzzle. With rune light, it actually tells you exactly how to finish that puzzle, so very, very easy. Highly recommend using rune light. Now we're going to switch back to our magic gear. We're going to make sure we've got some prayer, make sure we've got our melee on, and then we're going to... Oh, shit. We were meant to kill the last brother, but I accidentally searched the chest anyway. So all we're going to do now is we're going to telly out of here to the Furux Enclave, like so. What we want to do now is run over here and you can recharge your uh, recharge your energy at the pool of refreshment. Run back to here. This is where we can bank. If you need to get any more supplies, you get them. We're actually all good and we can just jump straight back into things. So Barrows teleport and then, yeah, we'll just carry on like so. So, uh, yeah, when you get into the swing of things, you can do it pretty fast and you can get through quite a few chests. Obviously, we're in pretty low gear, so we're not going to be absolutely max efficiency. But this is quite good. We're getting relatively decent XP as well, along with it. Um, actually, it turns out Varax is my next uh, tunnel as well, which is pretty cool. One thing you do have to watch out for as well is obviously Varax can hit through your prayer. So definitely watch out for that. Um, but yeah, here we go. Another tunnels already. We're definitely going through them a little bit faster. The first one was definitely a lot slower because I was having to uh, talk my way through it. But as you can see, we have to quickly work out which is the way to go. So we have to run through this one. But yeah, I'll tie in around about the 30 minute mark, let you know how I'm feeling. Or maybe a little bit sooner if we do actually manage to get, itself, get ourselves a unique. But yeah, so far, so chill. But yeah, so to maximise your rewards, you want to kill the last brother as well. It just means you're going to get a better chance of getting a unique. Way, and we got our first little bit of gear. Pretty much bang on the 30 minute mark as well. Very nice, that's 300 odd K straight away. Very, very nice to see that. Not too bad. Five chests in 30 minutes. Very, very good. I'm, I'm glad we saw one bit of armour. That's pretty much probably made up for uh, for pretty much everything we paid to do this. So that's pretty good. But yeah, that is very, very good. I'm so glad we actually managed to get at least one item. So yeah, super, super happy with that. But yeah, honestly... 30 minutes in and I can't really complain. It's been, it's it's pretty awesome. I mean, it's a bit of bossing. It's your first sort of easy go-to boss. And there's that chance there's a couple items that are worth well over a mil. It's just a down to luck really. And I mean, the fact that you're getting a little bit of early bossing, we're getting not too bad XP rates as well. We're getting around about 23K in magic, a little bit of range, a little bit of strength XP as well. And, yeah, we're doing a little bit of bossing. Honestly, you can't really complain with it. Barrows is Barrows at the end of, end of the day. It's nowhere near as good as it used to be. But it is still quite a nice little money maker. So, yeah, pretty much I'll tie in around about the hour mark. Unless I get another item, which we, you never know. We might get lucky and see another one. But, uh, yeah, I'll see you when, uh, whenever I see you, I guess. And this is going to be the last chest of the hour. Let's see if we get anything good. What do we get? Oh, that's not too bad. 36k. But yeah, there we go. Not too bad at all. Let's telly out of here and work out exactly what the costs were. We actually managed to do 10 chests, which is, is actually better than I, than I was expecting. So yeah, pretty happy with that. So what I am going to do quickly is actually repair all of the items. We're going to repair it out of the actual coins we got. We luckily just about had enough coins to actually repair all of the items. We still got a little left over that's not too bad. I've also worked out all the costs, so let's go back to Barok and let's just work out how much money we made in that hour period. So we obviously did get pretty lucky. We did manage to get ourselves a Varex plate skirt, so a lot of the money is from that. We did get a few runes. Obviously, I don't have the hard Mauritania diary done, so if you do have the hard diary, you are actually going to make a little bit more money than this, but Obviously, this is my alt account. It's not really built for bossing. It's more for like gargoyles and stuff like that. But still, we definitely profited a fair amount off of the runes as well. So we're going to chuck all of them in. We did obviously start with a thousand death runes, but we did end up profiting 250 of them. So there we go. For a full hour, 
of barrows we ended up making 528k what i'm going to do is quickly sell all of this and then we'll minus out the cost and we'll work out exactly how much profit we made okay so that is all of the items sold I did end up selling the Varex plate skirt for a little bit less than you could if you're a little bit more patient, but we still ended up with 519k. And what we're going to do is minus out the costs. The cost came to 100,151 GP. So if we minus that out, that's still a profit of just under 420k per hour. We actually did manage to get ourselves 10 chests in the hour. And to be honest, the first chest was a little bit rusty. I haven't done barrows in a long time, and obviously I was trying to walk you through it. So the average chest without the completion of the hard diary is 66,067. So if you times that by 10 chests, you'd be looking around about an average over time of around about 660k. Now, so if we minus our cost out of that, the average person, if you're getting around about 10 chests per hour without the hard diary done, you're looking at around about 560k profit per hour, which actually is not too bad at all, considering the requirements aren't actually that high. If you look at my gear, my gear honestly isn't that good at all, and we still manage to get 10 chests per hour. We could probably get up to about 11 chests with this setup, but... The, with the XP rates as well, it wouldn't be long before we actually got 75 magic. And then we can obviously use the Necklace of the Occult. And then we can also use the Trident. And the Trident would definitely speed it up ever so slightly. It does increase your DPS. It does increase the cost ever so slightly. But overall, it's definitely going to speed it up massively. So there we go. Honestly, not too bad a little money maker at all. We're going to jump into a little review now of the whole process. So for the review, first things first, we're going to go over the profit per hour. And I'm going to work the profit per hour on the potential. So if you were getting 10 chests, you'll be looking at around about 560k per hour, which honestly is pretty good considering you don't really need that high requirements. For the AFK rating, I'm going to give this a 2 out of 10. It's not very AFK at all. There's definitely a lot of uh, running about, a lot of clicking, a lot of watching the screen. But it's not too bad. It's definitely worthwhile. The current bond price stands at around about 4.9 mil. It's relatively high, but if you were to do this method solely to get that bond, it would take around about 8.5 hours, which honestly, it's not that bad. And Barrows is very, very fun. Barrows is definitely... Very, very fun. I really enjoy Barrows. It's definitely good to get your foot in the in the boss in. It gets you a little bit used to PVM content. Overall, I'd highly recommend this moneymaker. You do get a little bit of magic XP as well, so it's, it's a win-win in my eyes. So there we go. We end the episode with a quite a healthy cash stack of 4,112k XP. Obviously, we did do some things which are obviously untradeable things we paid for. So I did spend about 150, 160k on obviously the Book of Darkness. But that's obviously going to be on our account forever now. So that's quite nice. Also, we did upgrade the Ivan staff for 200k. So bearing in mind, we did spend a fair bit of money on those two items. Still over 4 mil now on the account in 11 episodes. So that's 11 hours pretty much of work. That's quite a nice cash stack and considering how low some of these requirements are for some of these money makers we've been doing, I'd say that is definitely some some very good ones in there. But that was that was a very good money maker and I must admit it's quite fun to do a little bit of bossing. Now, to be honest, I'm working on another project at the moment. I'm doing another video idea. So I'm not sure if I'm going to carry this series on. If you want to see the series carry on and... Let me know in the comments and I might I might drag it back out. It's definitely not completely over. I think I will come back to this in some time. But, but if you want to see it sooner, let me know. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I'm also going to be doing a Bond giveaway. I'll be revealing the Bond giveaway winner on my video coming out on Thursday. So a little bit different than normal. But yeah, so don't forget to check that out. To enter the giveaway, all you've got to do is like the video, comment with your RuneScape name, and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. 
And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Peace out.